BioBalance HealthCast, episode 142. Hormones in the News, HGH and Estrogen. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome back. It's been a very big news week, and we'd like to talk about a couple of things that are uh, in the news this week in our podcast today. The first thing that we want to talk about has to do with all the scandals that are coming out in baseball, as some of the biggest stars in baseball are uh, being punished because of their use of a, uh, or their involvement with a clinic in Florida called Biogenics, which has nothing to do with BioBalance <laughs> Health whatsoever. Uh, and, and in this clinic, apparently according to the news st- stories, they have been receiving uh, human growth hormones, which, they, which give them an unfair competitive advantage, which is why baseball is upset because the, the unfair uh, hyped up level of performance uh, when these athletes take these drugs and compete against athletes that don't have the hyped up performance skews the record books and, and uh, messes up the game for, for aficionados and people that are passionate about games. But it also runs risks with their health over their lifetime. Uh, a lot of athletes who have used these drugs in different sports have subsequently experienced brain tumors and cancers and, and early deaths uh, as a result of the abuse of some of these substances. So we are concerned about setting the record straight. There are legitimate uses for growth hormone and there are legitimate ways and manufacturing processes and controlled by the FDA processes to get these hormones from good doctors for good causes. Uh, What happens when athletes start to do this historically is that they acquire these substances from uh, international sources, from shady substances, from non-standardized and non-regulated manufacturing systems. And as a result, we don't know what all of the ingredients are, but we do know that there are issues and concerns. Let me tell you what my concern is. All right. The biggest concern to me is that there's a huge difference between giving an athlete who makes testosterone and makes growth hormone in adequate amounts more of those hormones right. so that they have so much that they're supermen mm-hmm. at the time. Mm-hmm. And that's one completely different subject because I know that this clinic couldn't have been using substances from Eastern Europe. They were giving them something else, but mm-hmm. it was the wrong patient. The patient, they aren't patients because they need these hormones. They're patients because they just want extra super physiologic levels of hormone. What we do is when people have a deficiency of a hormone as they get older or if they have a head injury or if men have testicular damage or if women have their ovaries removed Mm -hmm. at any age, Mm -hmm. then we can treat a deficiency. This is not about making people who are aging super people. Mm -hmm. It's about giving them back what they're missing and giving it to them in the right amount so that they can feel healthy and, Mm -hmm. and be actually truly healthy. What happens with taking someone who's already healthy and giving them too much of this is it makes them unhealthy. And so a a doctor's concern is much different than what baseball's concern might be. Absolutely. So a doctor's concern is we're making these guys more unhealthy. And it's not actually the cancers that are worrisome. It's that they suppress their own testicular production. So that after they stop being competitive and they come off of these substances, Mm -hmm. then their systems crash. Right, and it's very it's it's common in weight in uh, weightlifting competitions because I've had some older men who did this when they were young to take um, some kind of testosterone, but not pure testosterone like what we give, more like the Eastern Europe. They'd get it illegally through the internet or have Mm -hmm. it shipped over, and they would take it before a competition, and then they give themselves a shot of something called FSH to stimulate their testicles into working Mm -hmm. again because when they took the testosterone it shut them down then they take this one shot that would give them back function to their testicles but after a period of time of doing this which is illegal and this should would not have been prescribed by a physician it's just what they know in their Mm -hmm. group of Mm -hmm. athletes Mm -hmm. is that once they give the shot everything comes back, but it doesn't. Yeah. After certain cycles of this, 
then testicular function's gone. They're, they're infertile. They can't have kids, they can't, and they have no testosterone. So they place themselves at a health risk by making themselves old early, by, by actually suppressing their own testicles. And the trade-off. And they don't know that going into it. They, you know, the well, they may is, know it, but they, I don't think that they care until right, it happens. At that point, right. But I've seen the sad faces on men who come in with their wives when I was doing infertility, and they would come in and they'd be like, no sperm, really, really, and, and no yeah. testosterone, and really, I mean. But I can lift 800 pounds. I could lift 800 pounds, <laughs> but no longer yeah. when I was younger. But, but they didn't really think about the impact that would have on their lives. Right. So it's something that youth kind of takes away. But as we get older, we, we think about what impact things are having on our lives. And then with athletes, it may just be monetary or glory or staying well, yeah, in the I mean, game. Look, look at the scandals around the Tour de France and in the cycling sport uh, over the last several years and, and the issues with illegal substances. And if you read those stories mm -hmm. that came out uh, about that, the, the cleverness and the money that was spent and the almost spy agency kinds of manipulations that they do to gain an advantage, that's not medicine. No. and treatment of people that are ill. That's a whole different agenda and a whole different complex performance for the reasons of uh, honor and victory and money but and you fame. Can, people do this with all kinds of substances. Yeah. You can over drink water until you kill yourself yeah. with water. I mean, water's everywhere. Orson, Orson Wells or <laughs> drank so much coffee, they urinated out all his electrolytes and died. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's, so you can misuse any substance. What we're, what we're trying to say is, in this case, people who are healthy are using uh, hormones to make themselves supermen, but it's not that they were unhealthy and they needed it, it's because they want to be supermen, right. and then, or superwomen. Well, we and are we saying do that. It, I, we take care of people who are aging. But we're also saying we don't want a sort of globalized rush to judgment, because this is a concern that's in the news. We don't want public momentum to become so horrified to say, well, let's, bla let's ban all hormone treatments, or let's ban human growth treatments, or let's ban testosterone treatments, because that's a simple solution. Why don't we just do that? Well, that's kind of a governmental. Usually governments just go, oh, none of that, none of that. You know, it's kind of... Politicians. That, right. So instead of control, it's much harder to control the people, especially with the internet now, right. but they'll still get it. <laughs> they'll well, still get things that are illegal. It's the problem with people they, they using will. these and they need it. People need, some people need growth hormone. I don't use it yeah. because testosterone normalizes growth hormone. You don't use it in your treatment of your I don't use it with my patients. patients. Uh, but what I was trying to say, Kathy, is that uh, if there's a rush to judgment and if there's a popular momentum of decision. A fear. Oh my God, this is awful. A constant let's, fear of Let's globally something. cut it out. Then that can lead to negative consequences down the line that people can't even anticipate. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason I want to say that is the second topic that we're going to talk about today, which is also in the news this week, which is the third week in July of 2013, uh, has to do with that exact thing happening uh, in 2002. That's right. And, and in 2002, there was a study that came out called the Women's Health Initiative. And it wasn't supposed to come out until 2005. It was intended to be a 15-year study. It had been going on for 12 years. And they were calculating preliminary data. And they reached a startling conclusion. And they, and they cut the study off in 2002. And they said, and, and the study was about hormone replacements in women. Estrogen and, and progesterone in the form of oral estrogen and mm -hmm. oral progestin uh, called Prempro. Mm -hmm. and, and so they were studying this to see what would be the impact uh, on this replacement in women who were... Over 60, actually. The average age was 69. Uh -huh. And um, they were not looking at people who go through menopause and they immediately get hormones. They were looking at people who had never had a hormone mm -hmm. ever until they were at a higher age. or and. They had never, that means they probably didn't have symptoms or they couldn't find a doctor to treat them. But it also increased the possibility of them having more body fat because people who would qualify for this study who've never used hormones, who didn't think they needed them, 
didn't have hot flashes, and that's usually people who are obese. Mm. So that sorted out people who would be at that end of risk, people who are more at risk for heart disease and diabetes and things like that initially. Mm -hmm. So they then did this study and gave one, one group who had no ovaries just Premarin, which is estrogen, and then one group nothing, or placebo, right. and then one group Prempro, those were the women that had uteruses. And in 2002, and Prempro is a Prempro is pro, is estradiol, or well, excuse me, conjugated estrogens and Provera, which is a progestin, which is not the same as progesterone. Okay, it is a synthetic progesterone that doesn't work at all the same way. Mm -hmm. But it's in there so that people who have uteruses don't bleed. Okay, that's why it was in the combination. So when they stopped the study, it was because the combination group, the group that had Prempro the progestin had a slightly higher rate of breast cancer and heart disease. However, the group that just took Premarin, the estrogen, had a lower rate than people who took nothing. So they stopped this arm of the study that had both estrogen and progestin. And unfortunately, what came out is the sound bite. Mm -hmm. The sound bite said hormones cause breast cancer and heart disease. Right. And it's not estrogen, it was the progestin. And we know that those of us who read it, because there was a barrage, or I mean a barrage of phone calls to my office with people, you know, I'm stopping my hormones, I can't believe yeah. I'm on them, you know. And yeah, they, it's gonna kill me, I'm gonna it's get gonna cancer, kill me. I'm gonna die. And so that was, I mean, and people wouldn't be deterred even with the facts, because you had to read the study. Well, but not only that, doctors didn't absorb the fact. I mean, that's what I meant by the rush to judgment. Right. When, when you build a popular momentum around a scandalized uh, news bite, and the news media doesn't do in-depth reporting anymore. We, you know, we got, you know, 30-second segments, 60-second mm -hmm. segments, and move on to the next story of the day. And so this happened, and all of a sudden, the, the whole thinking of the country was distorted into saying, oh my God, hormone replacement causes breast cancer and heart disease and you'll die if you take it. Don't take it, whatever you do. And there were 2,500 studies or more before that, before that that said estrogen is beneficial. It'll decrease your rate of heart disease. It'll decrease, it does not increase the rate of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So those studies were just thrown aside for this one study that was popular, popularly put on the front page. Well, and, and uh, if, if you go back and look through our different podcasts, there are two or three that we've done over the last two years uh, talking about the WHI study. And we've contended all along that there was this rush to judgment and that people misunderstood and that there are follow-up research data out there that contradict this and challenge this, but the news media and many physicians still continue to say, because of what they read in the WHI, in oh my God, you can't give hormone replacements to postmenopausal mm -hmm. women. And the reason that we're talking about this today is, is it's come out in the news uh, this week. Finally. <laughs> as a result of a study done at Yale University that the, the researchers at Yale are saying now that as a result of that rush to judgment and that change in protocols, so that, that doctors uh, were not recommending hormone replacement therapy to women who were going through uh, menopause, that as many as 50,000 women have died of heart disease and breast cancer between 2002 and 2012. In that 10-year cycle, as many as 50,000 unnecessary deaths uh, may Those be attributable are the only ones they to track. this change. Those are the only ones they could track in the study. Yeah. So, and, and so we are feeling vindicated. Yeah. And we're wanting you to, to know and to challenge your doctor to say, are you aware of this? When it's time to have that conversation uh, with your physician and, and any woman that you love who is approaching the age where it would be a, a discussion to have about should we replace your hormones. I mean, fear fear is huge. I mean, it's just like fear of testosterone yeah. because of the a athletes, which mm -hmm. is totally out of context. Fear of taking estrogen was brought on by one headline. Right. And, and hopefully the fear can be relieved. I mean, it's almost... This, this study showed that it was very beneficial to replace hormones after menopause. Well, if you, if you read the data behind the data, I mean, you re, if you read the study, it uh, was 
published in Time Magazine this week. Uh, Alexandra Schifferlin is a reporter, and she quotes the Yale study, and they, they talk about, in the study, a regret that the popular media doesn't take the time to really delve into it and explain it clearly for, for consumption mm -hmm. uh, of the masses, but that physicians also don't take the time to read the research. They read the blurbs and the headlines, and even in the medical journals, the blurbs and headlines have been, oh my gosh, hormone replacement therapy is a dangerous thing, really, really, really don't do it, except in dire straits. And now they're saying, you know, you need to read more deeply into it. You have to read the, the study. The subsequent data. Most doctors it, didn't read the study at all. For, for this population and for that population, and it clearly says progestin was the problem. Mm -hmm. And progestin is the artificial synthetic progesterone. It's called Provera if you're looking at and the And when you combine it cot. with estradiol, mm -hmm. those women who took that set of protocols mm -hmm. were more at risk. Yeah, and I mean, we we found that when we read it, but mm -hmm. no one seemed to believe us. You know, we were we were. Well, they said, oh, you're just study. trying to sell something. Right, yeah, well, you know? we were just trying to make people better, and they and there were so many people that were terribly impaired uh, psychologically because they yeah. didn't ha have their uh, hormone replacement. I mean, people who right. were depressed and couldn't leave their home and things like that that still were so afraid of taking taking any kind of estradiol or estrogen, mm -hmm. that they were willing to be agoraphobic and, and stay at home and be afraid to leave the house rather than have a risk of breast cancer, which makes no sense. But the fe fear doesn't make sense. And this is what that one headline in 2002 yeah. actually brought about, was a, a global fear, and people stopped taking their hormones. They well, didn't talk to their doctors And, and it, the fear being a global fear got extrapolated to other hormones like testosterone. Mm -hmm. And and so your argument has always been that the aging process of deterioration that leads to fragility and loss of muscle mass and obesity and loss of sex drive and uh, m multiple other challenges, osteoporosis, uh, Alzheimer's, depression, for aging populations mm -hmm. can be avoided or significantly delayed if in that 10 year window of time, you can replace testosterone. Mm -hmm. And if you replace testosterone, then that blocks these things from occurring uh, sooner. It, it delays them and True. delays them. And, and we've watched them it work for the last 11 years. We've watched it work on thousands and of people. everybody, patients. including myself. <laughs> well, and, and a segue there too, that, that when you get on a roll, you say, you, you haven't said in this conversation, but you talk about the fact that you don't provide growth hormone to people mm -mm. because if you replace their testosterone, they often, usually, uh, start manufacturing the growth hormone that mm -hmm. they need anyway. So you don't mm -hmm. have to give it as an additional. Right. So it's it a isn't twofer. the, the <laughs> you primary can have two things for one. hormone that you take. And, it's, and it not, never becomes so high. Yeah. It, it, when you give an injection of growth hormone, you can make that injection be extremely high, super physiologic, super right. biologic, like you would never be able to make that much. Mm -hmm. But when you give testosterone and it stimulates growth hormone, you don't get those levels. You just get normal levels. So back to normal is basically what you you see. And, and just to be clear, when, when you say when you give testosterone, are you talking about all the different varieties and delivery methods that the, the no. all, okay. So I'm, ta I, I'm actually talking, the only, the only method that I've ever used in terms of replacing testosterone, the only two I've used, and I've used them all <laughs> for all my, for patients before I knew about pellets, was pellet therapy and injections, mm -hmm. okay? So those are the only two that will bring your growth hormone back. All the others- Of, of will, natural or of synthetic? Of natural bioidentical Natural bioidentical, all right. So it has, it has to be under the skin in a pellet that's long-term or a shot that you would give daily because mm -hmm. Pure testosterone has to be Gets given daily. Right. Uh, the other testosterones are basically synthetics. If you can give it every two weeks, it's a synthetic. Mm -hmm. So the safest and the one that works the best by uh, improving your growth hormone is pellets or daily shots. And I use the pellets. Okay, so to summarize, don't get swept to judgment. Do more in-depth exploration of the information and be careful about your use of terminology. There are lots of hormones that people can take and lots of hormones that get replaced in people. Athletic 
competitive manipulations are not medical science for the treatment of illnesses. So go to a real doctor, have a relationship with the doctor, discuss in depth all of your concerns and look at the information. Don't just be in the mob that runs out screaming, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. You could make a big mistake you with make, your own health. Well, they think 50,000 women have died unnecessarily because of that kind of response to the WHI. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.